Alice Chapter 5, Lesson 11, Variables and Arrays in Alice. We're going to put it all together in this lesson. Let's just quickly review arrays. When we started this chapter, we started with count loops, and we learned various different ways to do count loops. Then we did arrays. So remember, an array is a container that holds lots of the same objects. It's got an index that keeps track of the position of each object. And to declare an array, you're going to use a parameter inside your procedure that's an, a, a, uh, the array parameter. And the name is always plural. And then when you actually create, uh, call this procedure, you have to put the objects into the array. Then we went on to while loops, and we will use a while loop in this program. And most recently, we've been doing variables. So let's review variables. Remember, a variable is a named memory location that stores a value that can change during program execution. It's like a container that holds a value of a specific data type. And once you declare that variable and that data type, you cannot change the data type. You have to keep it consistent. When you declare a variable, you give it a name, assign the data type, and give it an initial value. So remember, you're going to use the variable tag from the bottom and assign it a name, a data type, and an initial value. We're going to do all of those things in this lesson. During this lesson, you're going to create two quadruped procedures, one for getting a random color and one for getting a random save. We've been picking random items from um, a, an array, and we've done that very successfully, but now we're going to go even further with our randomness to get random colors and random sayings using variables. We're also going to add variables to the procedures. We're going to get our random color and saying for one cow. Then we're going to repeat this process in accounts. So we're going to use a definite loop. Then we're going to add a parameter in our procedure so that we can use an array. And we're going to add a variable to get a random cow for the random color and random saying. Finally, we're going to add a count variable so we can count something that's happening. This is a very frequent thing that happens in games, so it'll come in really handy if you can learn how to do this in Alice. You're going to create a procedure to put all of this code in that will, you'll link it to an event. Then we're going to do a mouse click event to get the ball rolling. And then finally, we're going to change the count or definite loop to a while loop. So everything that you've been learning in this chapter is all going to come together in this one program. To get started, you're going to get into Alice and then open from the chapter open the chapter 5 lesson 11 colorful cows program from the backpack. Remember to add your name and date in the comment block at the top and save this program in your student account. When you've gone through all the instructions and you can see that there's going to be many, we're basically going to divide this program into three sections. So make sure you go through all three of them and then when you're finished, you're going to save the program and put it in the backpack for a grade. All right, let's get started. We're here in Alice, and you you have already opened up your Chapter 5, Lesson 11 program for Colorful Cows. Now, this program is going to involve several different steps, so I'll try and go slowly and explain everything. But one of the things you can do with the video lecture is stop and rewind and watch again. So whenever you're a little bit lost, if I'm going too fast, then make sure you pause it. Go through it again as often as you need to to get all the concepts. This program is going to put all the steps together. So it's going to be quite involved, and it might take you a couple of days to complete. Our first step is to create a procedure that's going to get a random color for the cow, to so change the cow a random color. Let's go ahead and create a quadruped procedure for this. You can come here to quadrupeds, create a new procedure, and we're going to call this random color. We are going to use random numbers for this, but all we can get is a random number. I want a random color. So we're going to actually do a two-step process. First, we're going to get a random number. Then we're going to use that number and a series of if statements to assign a color to each number. So we'll get the random number, and then from that random number, we'll assign a random color. And we'll change the cow. We need two variables for this, so I'm going to use a comment for my variables section. I'm going to declare these two variables first, then I'm going to drag up a comment from my programming section. We're going to just divide our program up. This is not a rule that you have to follow, but it does make your program a lot easier to follow and for other people to look at. 
Now we need two variables. One variable is for the random number and one for the random color. So my first variable is going to be a number. And when I'm doing random numbers, I'm going to stick with whole numbers, like, like 0, 1, 2. I'm going to click on whole number, and I'm going to call this um, pick color, because it's going to be a random number for the color. My initial value can be anything. I'm just going to stick with 0, but it doesn't really matter what you pick here. We're going to change it to a random number. Now my second variable is going to be for a color. So when I come here to data type or the value type, it's not going to be any of these. I'm going to come here to other types and we see paint as a choice. I'm going to call this change color. And once again, the initial value doesn't really matter what it is. We're going to change it. I'm just going to stick with white because it's like just a basic color. But you can put anything. So I've just declared two var variables, one for a random number and one for a color. Now I'm ready for my programming section. Now the first part is to actually get this random number. I have a variable for it, but I haven't assigned it a random number yet. So I'm going to use the assign tile. I'm going to drag it up. And the variable that I'm assigning is the pick color. Now right now I'm going to use any number because it's a placeholder until I get to the random number. So I just pick something. Now that something is there, I can click on the triangle. I'm going to come here to random. You've got all these different choices. I think the easiest one for people to use would be this third one. So you can include both numbers. We're going to start with one, and I just do that. It doesn't really matter, but people normally start counting with one. So that's the only reason why I'm picking one. And we're going to start from one to three. So this tile right here is going to select a random number between 1, 2, and 3 and assign it to pick color. Okay, now that I have a random number for pick color, I'm going to use a series of if statements to help me take that number and make it into a color. So I'm going to drag up an if tile, always pick true, and I'm going to take my number here, which is a whole number. I'm going to come down here to relational whole numbers and use the equals equals. So my first random number would be 1. I'm going to come here to pick color. This is my variable, my random number variable. And I want to see if that random number is 1. If it is 1, I want to assign this change color variable to some color. So let's drag up our assign tile. We're going to put it in the if part. Now I'm going to change color. And notice that it knows what the data type is. So here's my only options. You can pick whatever color you want. I'm going to start with blue. So what this tile tells me is first I'm going to get a random number, 1, 2, or 3. If that number is 1, my change color will be blue. Well, I need to do this two more times, if it's 2 or if it's 3. Go ahead and try them on your own. I'll be dragging up the tiles and creating them as well. And see if you can do this without looking. You know you're going to drag up an if statement. I'm going to come to relational whole numbers equals equals. I'm going to use pick color and this time I'm going to use two. Then I'm going to drag up my assign tile for change color and pick another color. This time I'm going to pick red. So you just see how and now I have to do a third one. So if pick color is three. Go ahead and do that. Go through the steps. And you're going to compare pick color. Oops, I did it. Not equals. You want equals. So I just got it changed real quick. And okay, drag up your assign tile for change color and pick yet another color. I'm going to do yellow. So I've got three random numbers. I've got three if statements. So now I've got a value for pick color. I've got a value for change color. But I haven't used it in my code yet. So now I actually want to go through my procedures for my cow. And you see that you have one for set paint. So I'm going to set the paint color to my variable change color. So I started with a random number, then I assigned a random color, and now I'm going to use the random color. And just for a little bit of fun, I'm going to change the duration to two seconds so it really stays there. 
Then when it's finished, I want it to change its color back so it's ready for the next step. So I'm going to do a second set paint, and I'm just going to use white. Go back to the original. So here's my whole procedure for picking a random color. I had to go through these steps because the only random thing I can get is a number, but once I have that number, I can assign it to many different kinds of things. Now let's call this procedure in our first method. And I'm going to do it for the tiny cow. I'm going to click on tiny cow, and you see a random color shows up. Let's drag it over here, and let's just run this. We're going to do incremental development. So we're going to test as we go all the time. And we see that it changed blue. I'm back again. Let's click on restart. It changes yellow. Restart. Yellow again. This is just picking a random number. Blue. And finally we get red. So I've gone through it several times. One thing that can make this a little more interesting is if I use a count loop. So instead of just testing it once and having to restart, let's test it maybe five times. And I can drag random color inside the loop, and then when I run it, it should get five random numbers, one at a time. And this we did with our arrays. You just check that it's getting a random number, changing it to a color, and then changing the cow. Hey, everything's working good. Make sure that yours works perfectly before you go on to this next step. Now we're going to basically repeat this process for random color. And we're going to do it for a saying. So we're going to not only get a random color for the cow, but we're going to pick a random saying that the cow will say as it's changing colors. So it's going to be a very similar process. We're going to need a random number for, a our, um, for the saying. And I'm going to need a different variable, not a paint, but a different data type for different sayings. Then I'm going to get a random number, and I'm going to use an if statement to change the value of my variable for different sayings, and then I'm going to um, use the variables. So here in Quadruped, let's go ahead and add another one, and we're going to call this random sayings. Random sayings. Okay, let's repeat this process. We know that we need two variables. Let's drag up our comment. The first one is a number. And I used pick color, so now I'm going to say pick saying. And once again, this is going to be a whole number. And you can pick anything that you want for the initial value. I'm just going to stay with zero. Then I also need one for my saying, so I'm going to use another variable tile, and we're going to call this change saying. Okay. Now what is my saying? What data type? Well, it is a text string. I'm going to go ahead and select this one, and for my initializer, it can be anything. I'm just going to go ahead with hello. We're going to change this so it doesn't matter what the initial value is. So just like random color, I've got my two variables. Now I'm ready for my programming. Let's draw up our comment. And the first thing is to assign a random number to my pick saying. So let's use my assign tool. And I have pick saying. I'm going to use any number as my placeholder. I'm going to change this to random. And then once again, I'm going to use the bottom one just because I think it's the easiest for students. And we're going to go from 1 to 3. So we're going to pick three random numbers again, one, two, or three. Once I have this, I can use a series of if statements to change the value of change saying to different kinds of greetings. So I'm going to drag up an if statement. Always pick true. And then I'm going to come here. This time it's not a, oh, it is still a whole number. I'm going to come here to equals equals. I've got my pick saying, and I want to compare it to one. If it is 1, then I'm going to assign a value to saying. So here's my change saying, and it is a text string, but I'm going to do a custom text string. I'm just going to make up something like, I am a colorful cow. Okay, but you can put whatever saying that you want right there. I'm going to repeat this process two more times for pick saying equals 2 and pick saying equals 3. So I'm going to be silent and just work on this code. You work on the code too or you can fast forward it and
pause and then work at your own speed. So I've got my three if statements there. Hopefully you have yours. If not, then go ahead and pause the video until you get caught up. And the sayings that you put can be whatever you want to say. Just make sure to keep it school appropriate, but you can have the cow say basically anything. Now I've got a value for pick saying. I've got a value for change saying. I need to use this in a statement. So I'm going to come over here to procedures. You see the say tile. Let's drag this over and I'm going to say change saying. So I'm using it just like I use change color. I'm not going to change it back. I'm just going to leave it at whatever saying it is. Since I changed the duration for color, I should change the duration for change saying. So let's make it two as well. Now I have finished this procedure. Let's go ahead and call it in my first method. I've got my count and I've got my random color. Let's click on tiny cow again. And you see random saying, let's just include this in our loop. So it should get five, at one at a time, get five ran, a, one random number for the color, a different random number for the saying, and it should be going through the cow. So I can have different combinations of colors and sayings. They're not always going to be the same. You can see how mine is working. But one thing I noticed is that it's going kind of slow. and it's, So what I want to do is a do together. I want the change color and the saying basically at the same time. And I think it will work better. So let's drag up a do together tile inside the loop here. And when I run it, I think I'll like the results better. So it's changing and saying at the same time. So you see I got red twice but different sayings. So I'm getting two random numbers. One for the color, one for the saying, and it's working really good. Now, three numbers isn't a lot of variety, so what I want you to do now, um, you're going to pause the video, and I want you to change the random number from one to three to maybe one to five. So you're going to get two more choices, so you're going to need to add two more if statements with two more colors, then I want you to do the same thing for saying. Change random number from 1 to 3 to 1 to 5, and add two more if statements with two more different sayings. Go ahead and do that, and then start the video again when you're ready. Alright, did you get everything done? Let's just take a double look and make sure. First of all, you needed to change your random number range from 1 to 3 to 1 to 5, so make sure you did that on both of your programs. And then you needed to add more if statements, so you should have a total of 5 on each. Now when you run the program, it should just be more interesting. It should still work the same, but give you a lot more combinations, more colors, and more sayings. Now we're only doing it for Tiny Cow right now.